Well, I hope you're having a good day so far. Today I want to talk about success. One of the things that all truly successful people have in common is the ability to communicate their message. So today I want to share with you some very simplistic but powerful tools and ways to communicate your message more effectively. In fact, people who really make a lot of money, speakers, musicians, politicians, uh, business people, one thing they have in common is that ability to communicate their message so that the person receiving it understands it. So I'm going to share with you a very powerful concept in understanding communication. And when you get this concept, you're going to feel like, wow, you know, I've got to really adjust the way I communicate if I want to make more sales, if I want to get my kids to do what I need them to do and all the other things that we want to be more successful at. All right, so I want you to look at it this way. Words, words equal symbols, all right? Words equal symbols. So every time you're communicating words, you're communicating actually in symbols. Now, if I throw out, if you will, a symbol to you, and you don't understand the symbol, then you're not going to get the meaning of the words. You're not going to get the meaning or the communication. You're not going to understand. So I've got to make sure when I communicate to you that the communication or the symbols that I send you, they need to be received by you in ways that you understand them. So this pen is a symbol. You know this symbol means pen. Now, if it's something different and I say this is a cat, and you look at this in cat, you don't get that symbol. There's a problem with the communication. So let me share with you how I use this to, for example, accelerate somebody's learning process when it comes to teaching them to fly. Uh, one of the things that I do, I've had for years, is my certified flight instructor's license. I've been a flight instructor for years. And um, I just basically wanted to have that because I wanted to make sure it enabled me to be a better pilot. I have to keep studying and all that good stuff. All right, so let me share with you a very cool concept on how I use this understanding that words equal symbols. So I get when somebody comes to me, let's say you're going to come to me and you want to learn to fly an airplane. And you've never flown an airplane before. You know nothing about how it works. Nada. Not a thing. You come to me, Gary, hey, I want to take a lesson. So we're going to go ahead and take a lesson. All right. One thing I do know about you, as long as you're at least, what, 16 years old, is that you drive a car. That's just something that's just a given. I know that, and this is how I'm going to utilize that information to accelerate my teaching with you. So, when you get in an airplane, we don't control the airplane on the ground like you would in a car. In a car, we have a steering wheel, all right? So you know what a steering wheel is. So the symbol of steering wheel for the steering wheel is that, all right? You know what a steering wheel is? We'll write this down. Steering wheel. All right? Steering wheel. So you know for years, you don't have to think about it. When you go want to go left, you turn left. When you go to want to go right, you turn right. And you've been just doing this thousands and thousands and thousands of times. You don't even have to think about it. Now we get into an airplane and we have something a little different. So this is how we steer the airplane. You've seen these pictures before, right? Your left hand goes here, your right hand goes here, and this is what you would, if you will, steer the airplane. Now when you get into an airplane with me, I put you in the left seat, you're in the pilot seat, we're taxiing, and I tell you to make a left turn, the first thing that you're going to do is grab the steering wheel. Right? Because you've been programmed, because you've been driving a car for so many years, that if you want to go left, I turn the steering wheel, I go left. You want to go right, I turn the steering wheel, go right. Your symbol for turning in a vehicle is the steering wheel. In an airplane, I'm not going to tell you this yet. In an airplane, we use a yoke for the steering wheel. Yoke. All right? Now, what is your symbol for yoke? It's not a steering wheel. It's a what? It's an egg. Crappy drawing of an egg. 
but you think of yolk as an egg. So now, I believe as an effective communicator, I'm going to share this with you and do this. I tell you, go ahead and make a left turn, but I say to make a left turn in the car, we don't use a steering wheel. Notice I haven't said the word yoke yet because you don't know this as a steering wheel. All right, so I'm not even going to use the word yoke yet. I'm going to make sure you connect what steering does, which is the pedals on the ground. So we have pedals on the floor of the airplane. You push the left pedal, the airplane turns left on the ground. You push the right pedal, the airplane turns right on the ground. So as we're getting ready to make a turn, I tell the person, push the left pedal and make your turn. Go ahead and push the left pedal. They start pushing the left pedal. Immediately, they also start grabbing, usually first, the steering wheel and go left. And I say to them, we don't steer, I don't use the word yoke yet, we don't steer with the steering wheel like a car, we use the pedals. And then they go back to the pedals again. And once they start doing that, inevitably because of the programming of driving cars for years, we go say, let's make a right turn. And they start grabbing this and I slap them, little slap, to pull them away from it and say, we don't steer that way on the ground. And by the way, this is a yoke. Oh. Now, the first time they touched it, if I would say to them, oh, don't touch the yoke, there is going to be a state of confusion. Yoke, what, what? Because their symbol for yoke is what? Is an egg. Not this. So now that I've got them using the pedals on the ground to steer, I now introduce this as a yoke. So, hey, Bob, Billy, Betty, whatever. By the way, this is not a steering wheel. Notice I've referred to this as steering, using the word steering up until this point. We call this the yoke. And now they don't confuse that. Now they have a new symbol. This is no longer the symbol in the airplane for yoke. It's no longer the yoke in an egg. The symbol is now the actual yoke that we use to steer inside the airplane. A simple understanding of words equal symbols can change everything. And because of this understanding that I have, in fact, if you're familiar with my work, I did um, about three years on Dr. Phil shows, The Doctors. And what I did on those shows, I took people who have been through major trauma, been in therapy one, five, ten years, and in one session, I get them more results in ten years worth of therapy. Now, how am I able to do that? One way I do this is I understand how to communicate and I understand my communication is symbols and I make sure that the person receiving the symbols understands those symbols. And then when they're communicating with me, I have the ability to decode their symbols very quickly whether they realize what the symbol is that they're sending to me is what they want me to know. I understand where they're coming from and I can read them and I decode those symbols and I get to the results very, very, very quickly. So anytime, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, just recently, somebody came to me, they wanted to learn to fly. I said, oh, I don't have a lot of time, but let me see if we can fit you in here. And he said to me, do you fly in bad weather? Well, let's think about that. Do I fly in bad weather? That was his question. So, here's the answer. I, I didn't know how to answer that yet because of one thing. What did I not know? All right, what was the word? The word or the words were bad weather. Do I fly in bad weather? Well, I don't know what his what is for bad weather. I don't know what his symbol is for bad weather. So I had to ask him, I said, from a pilot's viewpoint, my definition of bad weather will totally be different than your definition of bad weather. So what is your definition of bad weather? By me asking him what his definition of bad weather is, I'm essentially getting his what? I'm getting his symbol. Because if I said yes to him or I said no to him, there's a misunderstanding here somewhere because I don't know what his definition of bad weather is. His definition is going to be totally different than mine. Once we got on the same page and I understood what his definition of bad weather was, and he understood what my definition of bad weather was, I was then able to communicate the message effectively and answer his question. Make sense? All right? So I want you to be thinking from here on out, 
you are communicating in symbols. And if you send out a symbol and somebody does not understand what that symbol is, you are going to confuse them. Your message is not going to be concise and they're not going to understand you. All right, so there's my basics in the understanding of how to communicate effectively. Let me tell you what, when you really grasp this, it will take your communication so much higher to a whole nother level that you will see people really understand your message. If you're in business or sales, this is a must to learn to understand because people will get your message clearly, concisely, and it will encourage them to really want to do more business with you because they understand quickly where you're going and where you're coming from. All right, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Love to see your comments below as I do my very best to respond to most of them, if not all of them right now as a recent. I'm out of here. Between now and the next time we get to chat, you know what to do. Where's my book? It's in here somewhere. Anyway, it's don't let others rent space in your head, so make sure you're doing that this week and today and forever. It's a lot easier said than done. But anyway, have an awesome day. We'll see you.